My dear friends, you need to know about shift levels. And you already intuitively understand it. It's basically like a shift key on your keyboard that will give you access to alternative letters when you hold it down. So likewise, you can have shift levels on a controller. Naturally, we would supply that or we would apply that to the bus row. So when we hold down the shift key over here, which currently doesn't do anything, it would now give us alternate sources to select from, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. Now, the first thing is, I, um, we've been working in the local web interface, so we'll continue that because it's really quick and easy and you can see the changes right away. So I wanna show you something about local web interface. The, the button called local web configuration is really sending a command called web config. Sorry, that's supposed to be lowercase, web config. And the web config command, you can type it into the serial monitor, is really a toggle command. So since that web server was already on, I now used it to disable the web server and I can enable the web server as well. Oh, by the way, some of you will want that web server to be available at all times. That's actually possible, so why not uh, do that? The, the thing is that if you, if you reset the controller, it will not be turned on by default. You need to go to the firmware application and press this button, or you can actually assign an action to the panel that does it. So uh, let me show you that. Let's go to local configuration. Um, that's exactly, uh, yeah, that command in the serial monitor showed us and now it's turning it off. So um, let me just do it again. Local configuration and it's gonna bring up the web interface. So mm, it didn't, but it's gonna do it now, right? And yes, all right, thank you. Now, um, if I wanna set or toggle the web config on off, I could do it by adding this action to, for instance, the U1 button. So I go to system actions, I have something called web config and if I save that you can see that web configuration can now be turned on and off by pressing this button there's a little delay sometimes but uh, okay that's great now uh, if I reset this controller it would actually s uh, boot up uh, in the off mode and uh, now I need to turn it on to make sure that my web interface is gonna work otherwise this web interface won't work actually what happens if it's off and I'm trying to save. Let's try that. So I now uh, modify the control element. Okay, so guys, what I'm doing now is I'm adding a um, default setting for the controller for the web config. So if, if you do what I'm doing right now for the controller element, which is like a section, but for the whole controller, you could uh, do things like, for instance, you could apply a color across the panel if you wanted. Uh, why not? Let's try that. Uh, now we're doing it anyway. I wanted to have a mint color across the panel, okay. Uh, then I want to also have web config there and the command web config will receive a trigger on boot which will enable it. So I'm now going to save it. Whoa, that's exactly what I wanted to see happen. It says error on connection. The server is not reachable anymore so make sure that it's on. So we are just going to turn on the web server off the controller and press the save button. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, first of all, you can see that I've now colored in general all the buttons with the mint color and that looks really ugly. So I'm gonna remove that again, but I wanted to prove my point. Uh, you see that it doesn't affect the sections that has been overridden. So if you set a color for the whole panel in the controller element, then it will be overridden whenever you set a local color for an individual action or another section on the controller. Obviously, this is how it should work. So I'm now gonna drag that down here to remove it. But that little um, uh, uh, command, the web config I just inserted is super important and we are gonna see it right now because as I am now opening the serial monitor and pressing the reset button, my controller will reset and we should hopefully see that it actually s boots up being on from the beginning. Let us see. There we go, awesome. And I'm gonna remove that little action. Oh, you can see it in the serial monitor as it started. You can see, let me just remove auto scroll, starting web server for configuration on that IP address. So this is how you know it actually works. I'm just gonna remove that action from that one, get out of there and back on track. So shift levels. Finally, I'm sorry about that little um, intermezzo. We wanna apply shift levels for this. First of all, the shift key should f uh, toggle or while we hold it down, it should access shift level one and then fall back to normal when I release it again. So I'm, I'm now finding a system action called 
Uh, shift level, that's the first one. Super important action. Shift level. I want it to go to level one, and I want it to be hold down, and save. So now as I press the shift key, you can see the key is lighting up like if it's doing something, but the thing is that it is not affecting any of this because nothing on the bus row has been programmed so far to respond to a change in shift level. But we are going to change that. Let's take the first key. So the first key right there, we want that to respond to shift, meaning that we are going to add an action and we will um, select program preview source and let it be, let me see, uh, what should it be? It should be, since we have only an eight input switcher, it's kind of limited what we can actually do, but let's just select color bars, okay. Uh, obviously it would be much better if we had a 20 input version, but this is an eight input. Now the important thing is, I am ch going to change this modifier. I mean, we've been doing this before. When you add multiple actions to any element, by default, you will have both actions executed. The first one and then the next one. So right now, it's actually going to do something which is conflicting because first it's trying to select input number one on preview and then immediately after it's going to select color bars. It doesn't make sense, right? But the point is that if I change this modifier instead of AND to OR, which is the same as shift, what we are essentially telling the system is that the first action will be the, the normal one, but when I hold down the shift key, setting shift level one, it's gonna execute the second action. Let's see it in action. Press save, notice this button. Nothing happens yet, but when I press the shift key, when I press the shift key and hold it, it's saying bars. Okay, I can put bars on. Let's see if it happened in the ATEM software. Let's go over, over here. Uh, yes, bars is on, on, on preview, and now I press here and we go back to camera one. I hold down shift, bars, it's all good. But it's only this button that changes, so we want to have some of the other buttons do stuff as well. Now, uh, we can do that, uh, which we have done before, selecting these buttons and then basically copying this one onto the next one. Because, um, well, you, you can either add it and do the same thing, or you, you have to figure out what is most uh, quick for you. But I think it's very quick to change the input source, and then all I need is to select, for instance, color one there. Insert here, that would be three, then color two, insert here, input four, and then uh, media player one. Well, we already had media player one, right? So maybe we want to do something else over there, but then media player two. Uh, insert, and now I'm kind of running out of inputs, that makes sense. So uh, maybe what I want to do is to simply change this action to something called no action. I simply want the button to be blank, because notice what happens when you have the shift key held down and no action is specified for um, the other keys, they fall back to the normal state. So it's, it's only applied to keys that has it programmed in. It also means that if we want to blank out keys, we need to specify that in the shift state, it should do nothing. And that's exactly what I did now for input number five. So as I'm now copying this uh, onwards, sorry, this needs to be five, then um, like that. And now also notice that I managed to kick out my, my color change for that key. Um, so we would need to add that. I need to add local color again rows and then I'm going to drag it up here so I can also reorder actions quite easily. By the way, it doesn't matter where you put a local color and uh, oh, interestingly enough, we can actually color things differently. So maybe we'll do that in a moment. So let's just save. Okay, first, uh, let's see what happens. I have camera one, two, it's all the same stuff, but now I hold down shift and you see that those sources that I assigned there are there, and then for the remaining five, we have blanked out the display so they don't do anything. Now, let's say that we wanted the MP2 key to be rose-colored, just like this one was rose-colored over there. I can do that. Um, all I need to do is to find that key. What was it? It was key number four. So key number four right there. I want to add rose color in case we select the media and it's all good as it is right there. So let's save and check. Okay, I hold down shift, it's now rose colored. Very, very good. So that was uh, shift levels. 
let me see if there's anything else I wanted to cover about it. Um, well, basically, that's that's the main idea. You can do it for all the other um, elements on the panel, actually. Uh, stuff that could be interesting would be to apply such a shift level to, for instance, the, the, the key up here so that holding down shift would give you an auto transition. Uh, well, why not just try and do that? So uh, for the upstream key, which is currently, uh, let's, let's make it a toggle at first. Let's just see if it's toggling now. So it's, it's, it's back to like on off. So I'm toggling forth and back on this one. Um, so I go to the configuration of this one. I'm adding a shift level here and I'm saying I want the upstream key for ME1, Kia 1 to be auto. And uh, now I also want to apply the same system color I just had. So it's gonna be purple still, save. It's ready. I hold down the shift key. You see now it's auto. Now it's on off auto and I should have an auto transition. Let's look at the ATEM software. I see auto happening. I release it. I have toggle on off. Shift levels, ladies and gentlemen, super intuitive concept. Um, and uh, the next thing is that we'll be moving on to something called states in the next video.